everyone. Hello, TEFL friends. How are you doing? Linda here from ITTT, back again with another live session. Super excited to be here today to talk about this, <laughs> this exciting topic, um, teaching English abroad and how it enhances your career prospects. So I'm just going to wait uh, for a couple of people to join, you know how it usually works. And um, yeah, once we're our, a good sized group of people, we can start diving into this topic. And if you can hear me, if you can see me, please just leave a comment. We are live on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time. So wherever you're watching from, just leave a quick hi or hello into the comment section. And also let me know where you are watching from. I am in South Korea, about an hour and a half south of Seoul in a city called Cheongju. And I've been living in South Korea for six years. I recently, just on the weekend, celebrated my sixth, sixth year in um, Korea. I like to call this my Koreaversary. Um, and yeah, time really flies. Uh, it's been six years already and also about the same time, uh, same amount of time working for ITTT. So that's super exciting. And um, yeah, nice to see you again this week. I know I was not here last week. Uh, some of you might have noticed, but some of you might not have noticed. <laughs> but we do go live twice a week, me once a week and my colleague Lisa once a week. And last week I had to skip because I had issues with my throat actually. Uh, you know, South Korea, the weather is getting warmer and we start turning on the AC. And so um, that mix of hot and cold always kind of gets to me especially with my throat and things so i had to skip the live session but i am back this week and i'm super excited and i see we have renu renu hi from new delhi that's exciting hi thanks for joining and we have min min pei from myanmar hi there good to have you here today Thanks so much for joining. Super exciting. My Asian people here, our Asian section. I'm in South Korea. Uh, let's see if we also get people from other parts of the world. I know sometimes we have people from the US watching where it's still Thursday night. Sometimes we have people from the Middle East area, uh, also Latin America. We always have a really, really mixed group, which I super enjoy. That's why I'm. I, uh, you know, why I do this every week, uh, like I always like to say, it's not only me here talking about teaching abroad and TEFL things, but it's also you teaching me things and we're exchanging ideas and that's what I love so much. So, hello, hello, welcome back, we miss you. Oh, thank you so much, that's so sweet. I miss you guys too, it was weird skipping a week. <laughs> Uh, yeah, awesome. Hey, Juliana. Nice to see you too. Hi. Awesome. Great. So, uh, before we dive in, you know, as I always mention, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel and all our other social media. I'm going to also show you the handle names later on, but you can find us on pretty much any social media and please like and follow and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future live sessions and any of our other amazing content that we share on there. Uh, we share a lot of, you know, obviously TEFL information, teaching English abroad and online information, but also things like um, teaching ideas and things that you can use in the classroom, um, also job offers and um, yeah, all this kind of good stuff. So please follow along. And also, if you're listening to this as a podcast episode, thanks so much for downloading. We really appreciate it. As you might know, we always turn our live sessions into podcast episodes. And we recently also hit a milestone. I think it was um, close to, I think it was 3,500 podcast episode downloads, which is super, super exciting. Uh, so thank you so much for everybody who's doing that. And then I also want to mention that we do have, as always, a 30% off link that you can use. 
Um, we only share 30% off links during the live sessions. So take this opportunity if you're interested in teaching abroad. If you want to take a TEFL course, this is the best deal that you can find. 30% off. So how do you get the discount? One, you can... I never get this right. You can scan the QR code in the upper right hand corner here. Um, if you cannot do that, if you can't scan the QR code, that is also no problem. I'm going to share the direct link with you in the comment section and you will see it. It looks kind of like this. So at the end, Facebook Live, Linda. And that will get you 30% off any Tefl or TESOL course from ITTT. So I highly recommend taking advantage of this offer. Um, you just click on it. It will lead you straight to the application page. You fill out your application and then you'll see the discounted price and you can um, complete the application. So that is all of the business, I think. That's about it. Yeah, I think I mentioned everything. See, I'm, I'm, I haven't. Uh, last week I was off, and I already forget how to do this. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah. So anytime throughout this live session, feel free to please ask questions or also just comments. Um, you know, I really like to have a conversation with you guys, so I don't want this to be just me talking, like I just mentioned earlier. Um, so please, 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 any comments uh questions anything is welcome there is also a q and a session at the end where you have a chance to also ask questions also something that's not related to today's topic um certainly welcome and yeah then let's dive into today's topic teaching english abroad and how it enhances your career prospects and i'm going to make myself a little smaller now so that you can see the slides and I am keeping an eye on the comments. So thank you, Patrick, for the thumbs up. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, and then we can jump in. Like I always, how I always start my presentations or my sessions is by just introducing myself because we also get a lot of new people every day. And I just realized I'm wearing the same dress as in the picture <laughs> today. I did not plan that. Um, anyway, I do have more than one dress. <laughs> Not <laughs> just this one, um, but yeah. Anyway, my name is Linda Dunsmore, and I am on the one side. I'm a travel travel writer and content creator under the name Linda Goes East. Um, you can find that at uh, lindagoeseast.com. It's a uh, Asia travel uh, platform um, where I share my experiences about teaching, you know, English in China and Korea, but also living in China and in Korea and traveling in Asia, not only in China and Korea, but also other Asian countries. You find a lot of content there. So if you are interested in teaching English in Asia specifically, you might want to check that out. You're going to find a lot of useful information there. Or if you're just interested in traveling to Asia, also visit. And you can also find me on Instagram at Linda Goes East. I love sharing my content there and I love, you know, engaging with you guys. So if you send me a DM, I'll be sure to respond. I'm originally from Germany and the US. Um, my mom is German, my dad is American, and um, I'm based in South Korea. I basically started my uh, abroad journey back in 2012 when I first moved abroad to China. Uh, I did an internship there at a German startup in online marketing. And I loved it so much that after completing my um, bachelor's degree in San Diego, I returned to China for another year. And then I moved to South Korea. And that was six years ago, almost to the day on Saturday. I just mentioned that in the beginning. Um, I celebrated my sixth year in Korea and it's crazy because time goes by so fast and I've been enjoying this wild ride so, so much and I'm looking forward to many, many more years. And um, yeah, then on the other side, I'm a Teflon TESOL marketing professional at ITTT. That stands for International Teflon and TESOL Training. You can find us at um, teflcourse.net and on Instagram at International Teffel Training. 
ITTT is a leading Teflon T-cell course provider worldwide. We offer a wide variety of different Teflon T-cell courses, always also evolving and adding new courses to our uh, to our range, you know, to fit the current needs of the market. So whatever you're looking for, we're likely going to offer it. And um, yeah, that's about it. And thank you so much for this sweet comment about the dress, uh, Liturg. I hope I'm saying the name right. I know I probably butchered it a couple of times in the past. I'm so sorry. But um, yeah, thanks so much for saying that. That means a lot. And hi, back to the Philippines. Love the Philippines. All right, then we are ready to jump in. And basically why I picked this topic is um, because we get this question a lot at ITTT and also when, you know, looking around online at different forums about teaching, um, you know, TEFL and TESOL and things like that, we do get the question a lot uh, or people ask this online, you know, teaching English abroad, going abroad, will a gap year abroad hurt my career? Because some people, they don't want to do this long term. They might just want a break after college. They want to do a year or two abroad and then come back home to then, you know, dive into their career and work in um, work in the field that they actually majored in. Because a lot of people don't actually major in TEFL or TESOL or teaching English. And you don't have to, to teach English abroad. It doesn't need to be, you don't have to have a major in English. So, um, but they're still interested in going abroad and teaching English because it's just a great way to get international experience, you know, to see something of the world after college, maybe, or even later in life. So, but people are worried, you know, will a gap year abroad hurt my career? And that is basically what um, I'm going to talk about today. And um, yeah, basically what I always tell people who ask this question is that teaching English abroad is a smart move and it enhances career prospects both at home and also on the international job market. Um, and today, in today's session, I'm going to cover seven, basically seven ways how teaching English abroad is going to enhance your career prospects. And I'm going to call them teaching abroad benefits. So we're going to cover seven of these benefits. And at the end, after the seven benefits, there will be a time or one slide where uh, you are able to add any other benefits that you might think of while I'm doing this presentation or while I'm talking about it. Because I'm sure there's so, ma so many more than just seven benefits. Um, so I would like to take... I would like to ask you to just keep thinking about that while we're going through those seven different benefits. And if you think of one that I have not mentioned, at the end is your time to bring that to the table. So just keep that in mind while we're going through it. You know, maybe write them down as you think of them and then share them with all of us at the end. That would be really, really great. And yeah, as always, there will also be a Q&A section at the end. And also, please just keep your comments coming and any uh, anything that you want to add or ask, that is no problem at all. All right. Sounds good. And thank you so much for the sweet um, comment, Zohair. I, I don't know if I'm saying this name right. Zohair, um, your dress does suit you so much. It go, it does go along with the picture. You look superb. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. I do always try, you know, to dress up and look nice for these live sessions. So I appreciate that you uh, also appreciate it. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's move in or let's move on. Let's move on. Let's dive in. Okay, teaching abroad benefit number one that I'm going to talk about is you will gain real international work experience. So why is that important? Um, employees with international work experience are highly sought after by any kind of business. Also back home or any anywhere across the world, if it's an international company, they are going to look for people with who already have international work experience. And so moving abroad to a different country shows that you are a risk taker who is up for new challenges. And uh, 
working abroad in a different country also uh, basically makes you see things from a different perspective. You you may might learn a new way of thinking, um, you know, from a different perspective. And that is something that enhances innovation or that brings about innovation, right? If you can think outside of the box, if you are able to see things from different perspectives, you can think outside the box, which leads to innovation. And that's what any employer of any company really needs and wants in an employee. So that is the benefit number one that you will gain real international work experience and that is highly sought after by any kind of business. So that's the first and a very, very important benefit of teaching English abroad. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's pretty much to the point. I don't know what else there is to add, but um, if you want to make a comment, feel free. Um, but also definitely the, the risk taker aspect. And that's something that I've experienced uh, for sure. You know, uh, I moved to China first in all by myself in 2012. I didn't know anybody. I didn't know the city, never been there before. Um, and I was 19, I believe. And so when I went back home, you know, a lot of people thought that was very impressive. Um, that I was really brave and they they were really impressed by that. And employers are the same. They're going to see that because not everybody does that. Not everybody just goes up and moves to an entirely different country where they don't know anybody. So that says a lot about you. And so you're going to get a lot of plus points when applying for jobs after this experience. All right, moving on to teaching abroad benefit number two, uh, your experience teaching English abroad will make you stand out. And specifically what I mean by that, stand out on your resume, on your application, okay? So I think everyone knows that human resources staff, they only spend a couple of seconds skimming through an application. Um, they don't read the whole cover letter. They don't look at the whole entire resume. They just skim through it. And if there is something uh, like international work experience, teaching English abroad, that it, that's going to make them spend more time on your resume because it stands out, right? It will set you apart from other applicants and ultimately give you an edge over the competition. So... Um, and I actually heard that uh, out of all the applications, only 2% are going to be actually invited to an interview. And so having that international teaching experience on your resume is going to definitely draw some attention to your resume. It's going to be different than all the other ones. And that is going to likely, hopefully, get you invited to that interview because you're going to stand out from the other applicants. <laughs> and especially, I'm thinking if like, uh, for example, I always take uh, Korea or China as an example, but for example, if, if you taught English in uh, South Korea, and then you go back home and you apply for a job at say like Samsung or like a you know Korean car, company, things like that, it's definitely going to stand out and be a huge plus if you actually worked or have been to lived in the country where the company is from, because then you are able to actually understand the company's like core values probably better. And you're going to, you know, if people from Korea are coming to the American office, let's say, you know, if it's a Samsung, they go to the American office, you're going to have an advantage because you likely know the cultural differences and how to behave in front of Koreans. You have the cultural know-how. So that is going to be a huge plus. So that's just an example how that might also come into play. And then if they see that on your resume, they're like, oh, she actually, she's been to Korea or he's been to Korea and he taught there. That's going to be a plus and it's going to stand out versus someone who has never been um, outside of the country, for example. <laughs> 
I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> the comment section is kind of quiet, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. And I don't want to go too fast, but I think all the points are pretty straightforward and to the point. Um, but yeah. Teaching abroad benefit number three, you will learn how to adapt to new situations and to live and work with people from different cultural backgrounds. And that's also very, very important, right? So you're going to be faced with a lot of new situations. You'll learn how to adapt to a new environment. You'll learn how to work with people from different cultural backgrounds. And those are all skills that are very sought after in today's business world. When you go back home and want to work for an international company or you want to go to a different country and work for an international company there, those are skills that are going to be so, so, so valuable. And when we talk about, um, you know, working with people from different cultural backgrounds, it's not only, um, again, taking South Korea as an example, it's not going to be South Koreans that you're working with. Um, in a, in a school when you teach in South Korea, obviously, but it's also all your other foreign teachers that work there. So, for example, in the school that I worked at, we were eight or nine um, foreign teachers, English teachers, and it was also very diverse group. So we had people from the U.S., from Canada, from the U.K., from Ireland, from South Africa, from Australia, from New Zealand, so from all over. And even though we all speak English, we're all native English speakers, the cultures are still very, very different. And you also learn a lot about those other English speaking countries. So not only about, you know, the country that you are in, obviously that too, but also all the other cultural aspects and differences that your uh, English teaching English teacher coworkers bring to the table. And that's also very, very uh, valuable and something that a lot of people don't think about, right? But I learned so much from my English coworkers that I'm also able to now use in my daily life. Um, and I think that's something that definitely every company is going to see and val is will find valuable, right? Um, and also the thing with adapting to new situations, um, definitely something that I have also learned because different countries, you know, do things very differently, um, especially in South Korea, where the hierarchy is very, very important. So you're going to be in a very different work environment. Um, whereas like back home in the US, it's more, we're all like, we're all friends and friendly. We call each other by the first name, things like that. That is like pretty much the polar opposite of how it works in Korea. The hierarchy is very important. You pretty much address people only by their title, like manager or HR manager, things like that. You never call them by their names, things like that. So Adapting to new situations is definitely something that's sought after. And also not even things like in the work environment in general, but also obviously when you're teaching um, children of all ages, you're going to be faced with new situations every single day, right? And at some point you're going to just, you learn how to deal with it, right? You learn how to uh, maybe turn your stress into something powerful, right? I think at the beginning, yeah, if kids say something that you don't expect or they do something that you don't expect, at first you're kind of like shocked or you feel helpless, you don't know what to do. But if this happens, this happens every day when you teach children, most likely, then at some point you're able to turn this, uh, this um, helplessness into your own, into power, and you're going to adapt and be able to deal with it. I hope it makes sense. But yeah, <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Patrick says, loving it, keep going. I'm close to finishing my TEFL certificate. Appreciate the content. Great, awesome, thank you so much. And we have another comment from Zohair. You nurture some intercultural awareness, the similarities and the differences. You find it easy to adapt with everyone and others feel pleased and at ease working with you. Exactly, that's another great point, right? Um, 
because your coworkers and all the people that you're going to work with are going to see uh, that you're able to fit into this intercultural environment and they're also going to like working with you, right? That's a good point. Great, thanks so much for that comment. Very helpful. All right, moving on to teaching abroad benefit number four. You will develop organizational and communication skills as well as the ability to manage groups. Yes, communication skills are not only useful in the classroom, but can also be applied when working with coworkers on projects and other fields. This is very important, especially, um, you know, I taught kindergarten kids and elementary kids. Uh, in my first year in Korea, and then I moved on to teaching adults and business English and older students and things like that. But um, I think that you can really, really fine tune your communication skills uh, when teaching children, especially children, you know, from a different country who don't speak English as their first language, because you're going to learn how to present information in a way that everybody understands easily. And that is the key to communication, right? So yeah, that's a very, very, very important thing. As a teacher, as an English teacher, teaching students uh, English as a foreign language, students who don't have English as a foreign, uh, as a native language, being able, you're going, and you're going to get better at this too, as a teacher. <laughs> Um, but you're at the end, you're going to be able to rely, relay information in a way that's easy to understand, even if they don't speak English as their native language. And that's a very, very important communication skill to have, right? And you can also apply that later on when working with coworkers. And yeah, you will also have learned how to manage a group and have developed your leadership abilities. So sure, you're a teacher, you are managing your students, and that also takes practice. It's not as easy as it might seem. And with anything, it gets better over time, but that's a skill that you really will be able to take away from your experience. And you can apply it to your coworkers later on. So very, very important. And you're not only going to be able to manage a group, you know, your students, but you're also going to be able to fit in and work with your other coworkers, which are two very different dynamics, uh, but you're also going to learn that and in an international environment, right? So that's very, very, that's going to be very, very helpful and useful for your future career. And I apologize that it's getting so dark. Um, it is 10.30 a.m., but it looks like it's the end of the world outside. I don't know what happens. I really need to get a ring light. I thought about that at the beginning of the session, but it's so dark now. I hope you can see me. I turned on my screen super extra bright, so I hope it works out, but I did not expect it to be that dark now outside. It's raining, and it really looks like the end of the world. I don't know. I hope you can see me still. Yeah. So that was teaching abroad benefit number four, uh, organizational and communication skills and the ability to manage groups. Good so far? <laughs> then we can move on to teaching abroad benefit number five. Oh, over here. Yeah, I think a very, very important... Um, a benefit to talk about, you are likely going to develop foreign language skills, right? Living abroad in a different country where they probably speak a different language, you are at least going to pick up some basic words, right? That's the minimum. You're going to definitely pick up how to say like, hello, thank you, and also how to take a taxi, very important, uh, how to buy things, like really basic stuff. That's the minimum you're absolutely going to learn. I can guarantee you um, after a few months of living somewhere, those are the things everybody pretty much always picks up. And then you can obviously turn that into something more. You can attend language classes. They're pretty much on offer everywhere. Um, and you can then build on that. And yeah, foreign language skills are definitely a 
wonderful benefit in today's globalized world um, and a true asset. And actually, most people in the world, they speak two or more languages. So it's definitely something that's going to help you in the workplace. And acquiring, also acquiring a second language opens doors to new career prospects at global companies back home and also abroad, obviously. And depending on, you know, where you are going, um, if you, for example, go to Spain or Latin America and you learn Spanish, that's obviously one of the big languages that they use in many, many countries all around the world. So that is super useful. Um, also, obviously, uh, things like Chinese, um, also super useful these days, but really any kind of language, even like Korean, um, you know, Korean is pretty much only spoken in Korea, but it's still in today's world, any, any foreign language, even if it's just spoken in one place, that is going to be a huge asset. And also thinking about if, you know, if you only, if you never learned a foreign language before, um, and you're an English teacher, and then you start learning a new language, it's actually going to make you a better teacher as well. It's going to make you a better teacher because you understand how language learning works, right? You you understand, you can feel for your students basically, and it's going to make you a better teacher as well. And then you can, I definitely recommend, you know, wherever you go teaching abroad, take language classes. It would just be such a shame not to take advantage and usually they're not that expensive because you are in that country. It's really easy to immerse yourself into the language and, you know, just use that. Take that for your advantage. Definitely. All right. We have a comment here from Patrick. Do you still teach or are you now full time with the marketing side of things. So at ITTT, I do not teach at all at ITTT. I do only marketing for ITTT, but I do also teach English and German actually on the side. So outside of ITTT. Uh, and it's been great fun. I actually started teaching online this year for the first time. I thought before uh, the pandemic, I was teaching a lot of different in-class uh, classes in Korea and it was a lot of fun but then everything was put on hold and then we moved to online so I was thinking about you know what um, let me also try out this teaching online thing and it was actually quite fun and that's when I also started teaching German which has also been really interesting so yeah I do still teach yeah and do marketing as well all right, so here has a comment to add. You develop your linguistic repertoire by traveling and working in various countries. Being a multilingual is very important, especially in our era. Exactly, right? Exactly. Yes, I definitely agree with that. Yep. Nothing more to add. That's a great comment. <laughs> yep, great. <laughs> awesome. Good, okay. Then let's move on to teaching abroad benefit number six. You will build a global network of contacts. Okay. Um, and this might be a little bit hard to understand, especially if you're new to, uh, you know, networking and what networking means and things like that. But it's actually so, so valuable for the for your entire future, right? So you can really make something out of it. So coworkers, friends, and other people you meet abroad, they add value to your professional network. New connections can lead to limitless career opportunities back home and abroad. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways how you can go about this. Obviously, the first kind of new connections you make are at the school you're working at with your coworkers, which is already great. Some of your coworkers, they will have already, uh, will already have experience working in this country and maybe they've even worked in other countries. So that's great to have that connection that maybe if you also wanna work in this other country, this coworker can then hook you up, so to speak, give you contacts to schools and things in this other country. So that's great, but also, 
other people living in this country that are maybe not teaching related. So typically every, <clears throat> I know this from like uh, where I used to live, like in China, um, you know, and also in Seoul, <coughs> excuse me, let me have a sip of coffee before I continue that thought. Basically, they will have all these um, <clears throat> embassies and chamber of commerce, and they have events. And you, for example, um, as an American, you can go to these events hosted by the U.S. Embassy or the American Chamber of Commerce. You can go there, most likely. Um, or if you meet other Americans, they will have connections to get you to events like that. And that those are great places to network as well. You can really meet some interesting people, make some great connections. Um, and that is very valuable, uh, definitely. Or even, um, you know, locals in the country where you are. It doesn't have to be only foreigners, obviously, um, but also people locals working so i think that's also something that's very important right okay joey has a comment to add i completely agree with you about international connections and working abroad it has changed my life or life yeah definitely same yeah i've met so many interesting people who have you know all these connections um so, and you're going to realize, especially, you know, in a country like South Korea, that's relatively small, like the expat community is really small. So you're going to be friends, you know, your friend is a friend of this one, if this person and this person. So like, it's all connected and you just need to utilize that and make your connections that will benefit you later on. Right. Um, yeah. I hope I'm making sense. I feel like I'm starting to ramble now. <laughs> yeah, Juliana says, I felt that at my former student clubs. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, Joey has an example for us. For example, I get wonderful teaching, uh, English teaching assignments all over Russia. Currently planning my 11th trip there. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, so see? Or even I was taking um, Korean language classes at the local university here. And uh, one of the, the managers for that Korean class asked me, oh, they're looking for an English teacher at the university for like speaking classes or something, if I'd be interested. So there you go. Even going to a language class can lead to a new opportunity in the in the work field so that's really really good good example and so so valuable i think that is one of the most important things um or important benefits of teaching english abroad because you of all the people you're going to meet and with social media now you know you can add them so easily you know follow them on instagram on facebook on linkedin even and then you always you can reach out to them and maybe a great idea would also be to print uh, business cards for yourself. So whenever you go to an event, you can just hand them out. Um, that's something that a lot of people do. It's not, it's not weird. It's what a lot of people do. So yeah. Or even there's like um, job fairs that you can go to where also people from other countries can come. Like in Korea, they have an international job fair. So foreigners can go there as well and you can connect through that. But yeah, any type of these kinds of events are great, but not only events, you're just going to meet people no matter what. Because like I said, the expat community is so small and tight. So you meet, you know, a coworker of yours is going to introduce you to their friend who is a friend of this one, this uh, ambassador maybe, or like, you know, I go as this international school teacher. Um, or I've met so many people who work at like uh, Volkswagen in Korea or like at Samsung or all these big companies. So that can be a real asset for you, right? If that is something that you want to pursue when you go back home, for example. 
All right, then we already have reached the last benefit that I'm going to talk about. So teaching abroad benefit number seven, you will have plenty to talk about during job or graduate school interviews, right? Uh, thinking about job interviews and graduate school interviews, they always want you to talk about situations where you had to adapt to new situations or you had to deal with a problem and how you solved it. So teaching English abroad, you're going to have a lot of these situations that you can talk about. Because um, a lot of people have difficulty answering this question because they never really had to adapt to any new situations, right? Um, but when you go abroad, you live abroad in a different country, you work as an English teacher, you teach non-native speakers English, you're going to be faced with problems every single day. You're going to have to adapt to a new situation every single day. So you're going to have so much to talk about. And this can really get you into the door of a really great job or a really good graduate school, depending on what you want to do after. So, yeah, I think there's nothing more to add to this. If you want to, if you have something to add to this or an example, that would be really great. Um, if not, then yes. This is the part where I'm going to ask you if you have thought of another benefit of teaching English abroad. Those are my seven that I've come up, I've come, uh, up with, but I'm sure there's more. Obviously, there's more. There's always more. So if there's something that I didn't mention that you thought of, please, now is the time to share that with us uh, while I have another sip of my coffee. And Zohair says, keep the snowball of knowing people rolling. Yes, definitely. Forming connections. Now there's thunder. <laughs> there's like thunder and lightning outside of my window now. I don't know what's happening today. It's like really the end of the world. But we're making it through it. <laughs> All right, so maybe that's it. Maybe you also don't, you know, have another one to add. That's okay. You can also, if you're watching this later in the replay, feel free to just leave a comment. If you thought of one more advantage or benefit of teaching English abroad that I didn't cover, feel free to leave that in the comment section. Um, or just take that with you. Think about it today, tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's great. And which benefit do you think is the most important? I think really the connections part, um, I think is really important. And that's something that you can really, um, you know, take into your own hands, I think. Um, and also because I love learning languages, the language learning part. So wherever you go and wherever you teach, really just look, take a language course. Like, why not? You know, it's it's just great. So it opens doors to so many new things for you personally. Uh, you know, you'll be better able to integrate into local community, into the local community with the locals and things like that. So I think, yeah. <laughs> Min Min says, thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for watching and staying until the end. You're awesome. Also, Zohair, he says, thanks, dearest. You nailed it. The presentation was so educative and informative. Keep shining. Actually, you covered all the benefits. Yeah, I hope so. I'm sure there's more. There's always more. But I think those seven are definitely the key benefits of teaching English abroad. Like I said, if you come up with another one, please leave that in the comments. Um, I'd be really interested in hearing that from you. Um, yeah, so I think that nobody has anything to add means that I covered everything, which is great as well. And thank you so much for your sweet, sweet comments. <laughs> Lisa says, thank you for your knowledge sharing. I have a question. Okay, all right then. Before I answer your question, um, and before we move into q and I just want to quickly mention how you can find ITTT online. 
Uh, so you can find us obviously on our website, teflcourse.net, and then also on Facebook. <laughs> Many of you are already watching right now on Facebook, so you know where to find us. You can just uh, click on the like, Facebook page like button. Then we're also on Twitter at Tefl Course and on Instagram at International Tefl Training. Um, and we're really trying to grow Instagram. So please, if you could, if you have an Instagram account, could you please go there and just follow us? That would be so, so great. And like I said, you can also follow me on Instagram at Linda Goes East. Um, I would also really appreciate it. And please also don't forget that we have this 30% off um, offer during our live sessions, only during our live sessions. So you can scan this QR code right here and I'm going to share the um, discount link into the comment box one more time. Um, so you can see it here. It looks like this. So you can click on that and then you can also get your 30% off. If for some reason it doesn't work, just send me a message on Instagram or us on Facebook. Um, let us know if it doesn't work and I can hook you up. I can show you how to do it. No problem at all. Okay, so now I'm going to make myself bigger again. And um, the sky cleared up a little bit. It's not as dark it was as it was before. So I think you can see me better now. It's still not great. Um, I'm going to try and get a ring light probably. <laughs> uh, I never thought I'd have to get a ring light, but here we are. Okay, Q&A. And I'm going to go back to Lisa's question now. Thank you so much for this question. So Lisa asks, uh, do you have a chance to work as a TEFL teacher if English is not your native language? Yes, great. Okay, so my, actually my coworker Lisa, she goes live on Tuesdays and she's from Russia and she worked as an English teacher in China. So she has a lot of experience of teaching English abroad as a non-native English speaker. And there are many countries where you can still uh, where you can work as an English teacher, even if English is not your native language. So what I recommend, one, tune in to Lisa's um, live sessions. And you can also find, she talked about this before in some of her live sessions, uh, teaching English as a non-native English speaker. So you can just go, I see you're watching from Facebook. So there's a folder in the video section that says uh, live sessions, I believe. And you can find her videos there and you can search for the topic. Um, and you can also go to our FAQ page. And I'm also going to share that link with you right now. Uh -uh, yep, here. So teflcourse.net slash FAQ. Um, and this question is also answered there with the specific countries where you can teach as a non-native English teacher, okay? I highly recommend you checking that out. So it's definitely possible, definitely possible. It's not only for native English speakers, okay? Good, great. Then Juliana says, thank you so much. I learned a lot from this live session. Oh, thank you, that means a lot, great. <laughs> Patrick also says, can't add to your content, but happy to give you a big thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. I really appreciate it. Marcia says, thanks for everything again, Linda. Greetings from Chile. One of these days I'm going to write you on, on your Instagram. Yes, please do. Please do send me a message. I'm super interested in Chile. I do want to do a live session about teaching English in Latin America, but I have never even been to Latin America, let alone have teaching experience there. So I'm trying to gather as much information as possible and possibly also get a guest on who will be able to share more information about that because I know a lot of people are interested in teaching in Latin America, in South America. So um, I, you know, I just, I could obviously just do it and, you know, throw out the facts that I find online, but I'd rather just have someone who's actually had experience um, also with me there. And so I'm just kind of setting things up right now with that. But um, 
So any kind of information you want to add, uh, you want to share, that would be really, really great. Thank you so much. All right, Zohar says, looking forward to other presentations of yours. Have a nice night from Morocco. Thank you so much. Thanks, have a great night as well. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Thank you so much. Great, okay, then if there are no more questions today, I can sign off, but if somebody still has a question, feel free to ask. Um, you can also, if you watch the replay, um, ask your questions in the comment section and we will get back to you. Um, May says, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This was such a great group today. Thanks so much. I always talk about our Tefl family and I really feel like our family is growing. We're sharing and exchanging information. So that's what I really, really love about this. Um, and that's why I really enjoy going live because of all the great people here. It's so nice, really. Thank you, Min Min. Have a great day as well. <laughs> Hope to see you next week again. Thank you so much. Okay, then... Yeah, I think I'm also going to sign off if nobody has a question anymore. If you have a question and you don't want to, you know, ask publicly, that's also totally fine. You can just DM me on Instagram at Linda Goes East or um, send us a message on Facebook. That's totally cool. No problem. Um, and yeah. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to talk about next week. If you have a topic wish or a suggestion also let me know and then i can prepare something and talk about that um and yeah i think that's about it again please don't forget to like and subscribe as you know you know the drill and don't forget to take advantage of the 30 percent off deal if you don't yet have a teflor tesol course this is a great opportunity to do so and yeah, I think then I'm going to sign off and say bye-bye to you all. And until next week, okay? Hope to see you soon. Stay safe and yeah, have a wonderful day or evening or night, wherever you are. Thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for your comments. Bye, bye-bye.